Since today is my 33rd birthday on this planet, I thought I would share 33 tips that I wish someone would have told me when I started my fitness journey. Set clear and realistic goals. This has never worked for me. What worked for me is having one well-defined goal. I want to lose weight and I want to gain muscles is not a realistic goal because it's not one goal, it's two goals. Yes, as a beginner, you will lose fat and probably gain muscles, but it's better to just have one well-defined goal. Either I want to lose fat or I want to gain muscles. Don't set anti goals. I want to gain 10 kilos of muscles in the next three months, or I want to lose 20 kilos in one month is a goal, but it's also an anti goal because it's almost impossible to achieve this in this time frame. So you're setting up yourself for failure. It's better to have modest, smaller goals that are relatively easier to achieve than one big fantastical goal that is really hard to achieve. Ask for help. I really, really wish I did this in the beginning. No, no one will make fun of your form. No one will judge you. If anything, people in the gym are really helpful and really happy to help. You have to remember that we all started somewhere. We didn't start strong and shredded from the get-go. Don't get overwhelmed. I used to get super overwhelmed by the amount of information out there to the point that I wanted to give up. So stick to the basics. The difference between a pro and a beginner is that the pro just mastered the basics. There's no magic diet and there's no magic training. So start with very simple workouts. Something like 5 times 5 it has all the basics and will keep you progressing for a long time. Don't just train your biceps or your booty. Understand that you'll be very sore in the first few weeks. I used to be very scared of going to the gym again because I will get more sore, which is further from the truth. The longer you work out, the less sore you will get. If you don't work out, the soreness will stay for a long time. There's just one small caveat here, which is the difference between muscle soreness and injury pain. If the pain is coming from bones or joints, then you should go to your doctor and get this checked. Be a fitness minimalist. I'm very guilty of not doing this for years and it cost me a lot of wasted time. I used to spend hours researching what's the best lifting shoes or what's the best lifting built. This even has a name which is called productive procrastination. You feel like you are doing something, but in reality, you're just wasting time. You don't need the fanciest training shoes or the most advanced workout program or the fanciest diet. All you need is a comfy shoes, a towel, and a water bottle. That's all you need to go to the gym and get to work. Start slow, but not too slow. It gets boring, but also not too challenging that you lose motivation. You want the right mix between challenging enough that you progress, but not too challenging that you quit. It's kind of like playing a game. If you play something hard like Elden Ring and it's your first time doing this, all you will do is destroy your keyboard and just quit. But if you play something easier like Mario, it will be fun and you will make progress. Practice mindful exercising. Workouts need to hurt a bit. If you go through your exercises and you don't feel anything, then you're just spinning your wheels and wasting your time. Check the form of the exercise that you're doing on YouTube, add enough weight to feel the muscles, and concentrate to execute the exercise to the best of your abilities. Take videos of yourself in the gym to correct your form. I would have needed some convincing to do this because I don't really like taking videos of myself. I know, I'm in the wrong career, but it's a very, very useful tool. So again, check the form on YouTube and compare it to what you're doing and correct yourself session to session. Don't skip leg days. It's very self-explanatory. I used to have chicken legs and I used to blame it on my genetics, but when I started doing legs, they grew. Who knew? And especially in the beginning because you'll be gaining a lot of muscles and you don't really want to miss this opportunity to gain a lot of muscles in your legs as well. Similarly, don't just do legs and booty. This one is more for women. Don't just train your lower body. You also need to train your upper body. Your booty will not grow more just because you're doing only lower body. You also need upper body to have well-balanced, well-rounded body. Training splits don't matter. I've tried all training splits out there and they all work. What doesn't work is not doing one for long enough to see progress. Don't be afraid of the free weight section. It looks intimidating, but it's not. Very few people there know what they're doing. So don't feel like an imposter. And believe me, no one is really paying attention because everyone is just trying to figure out what they are trying to do. Take progress pictures. You will make a lot of progress in the first six months and you would want to see how you started and how you look right now. Don't ego lift. No one is really impressed by your bad form or your uncontrolled big weights. There's no shame in starting small and it will save your joints and it will actually make you progress faster. Embrace being weak. Remember these days because it will not last and it's a good memory to think back and look how much progress you have made. Celebrate small wins. Get yourself an ice cream or whatever you like every time you hit a PR or when you hit a new low body weight. You worked hard for it and you need to know that you're doing a good job so treat yourself. Manage your expectations. You will not be an elite power lifter in your first year of the gym. I used to train six times a week for years where I could have gotten the same amount of gains in just three. There's no point in over pushing yourself in the beginning. So respect your body, allow it to adapt and progress. Go to the closest gym you have. Remove any friction 
to skip the gym because if the gym is too far you'll get lazy and you'll not go most of the people that meet me think that i'm super motivated but actually i'm the complete opposite i literally pick where i move based on how close the gym is don't go to the gym in peak times you will hate the gym if not only for the smell and you will not go again the best time to go to the gym is in the morning or in the afternoon or late in the evening. Don't use social media in the gym. The best thing to do here is not take your phone to the gym in the first place, but if you have to, don't use social media. I see this all the time in the gym, people wasting their time spending two hours in the gym and actually doing just 20 minutes of workouts. So go to the gym, get work done and leave. Educate yourself on what really matters. Don't watch random YouTube videos that will not help you. I'm guilty of this too. I used to watch Olympic lifting, why do I need to watch this? I'm not even doing it. Be very systematic on what you learn and how you learn. The learning cycle goes like this. You learn something, you apply it, you keep learning, you apply it more until you have a good grasp of how to do it. Otherwise, you'll be super overwhelmed by the amount of information out there and you'll get analysis paralysis. First, you want to learn about the basic compound movements, something like squats, bench press, and deadlifts. Once you have a good grasp on that, you can move to the next concept. Don't listen blindly to gym bros and gals. Just because some dude or girl is big or looking good doesn't mean that they know what they are talking about. Even the guy that you're watching right now, who you should definitely subscribe to and like the video, just being on social media making videos doesn't mean I know it all. I always cite my resources in the description below, but you should always form your own opinions and research on your own. Everyone's body and journey is different. There's no generic advice that fits all. Don't overuse supplements. Again, be a fitness minimalist here. All you need if you need anything is whey protein to complete your daily protein requirements and creatine. No need for pre-workouts or all the vitamins out there. Avoid fat diets. There are many, many diets out there, all promising some magic results that doesn't exist. All you have to do is eat a well-balanced diet, eat enough carbs, eat enough proteins, eat enough fats, and you're good to go. If you don't like carbs, then do keto. If you want to lose weight, then be in a calorie deficit. If you want to gain muscles, then you need to be in a calorie surplus. It's simple, but hard. Eat carbs before you go to the gym. You will need the energy. Understand that protein is not only important for building muscles, it's important for all your body functions. So eat your damn protein. Get enough sleep, seven to eight hours a day. This will help you recover and progress. I will sleep when I'm dead is a long forgotten motto at this point. Know that you will be experimenting a lot in the beginning because you need to know how your body works and figure out what works and what doesn't. You might think that you already know what works, but you probably don't. And no one will know that for you. So be open-minded and be ready to experiment. Practice being patient. Progress takes time. Know that this will take a lot of time and this is why it's even more important to celebrate small wins along the way. Reaching your goals will make you happy for approximately five minutes. But what will make you happy longer is the journey. I always thought that once I have abs, I would be super happy and everything will be great. Nope. It didn't make me happy. Prioritize consistency over perfection. You don't need to feel amazing to go to the gym. You just need to be consistent. You don't need to be perfect. You just need to be consistent long enough to be perfect. Don't skip your cardio. Resistance training is important, but so is cardio. And it doesn't have to be all out high intensity interval training. You can just do more steps or a light jog if you're into that. Compare yourself realistically. The best thing to do is not to compare but we are humans and we will compare. So it's better to do it realistically. Don't compare yourself with people who have been lifting for years and don't compare yourself with people with different heights and understand that even if everything is equal, there's the uncontrolled variable of genetics. So it's better to compare consistency and the work itself, not the uncontrolled variables. 